<laughs> Ellie Wright was nine years old when she developed MRSA, a serious staphylococcus infection caused by a bacteria known to be resistant to antibiotics. We thought that it was just an infection in the left hip. And then once the lab results came back, they noticed it was the superbug, MRSA. There's already been a change with some common infections that can't be treated with oral antibiotics, and the ultimate risk is that the person will either suffer damage from the infection or die from the infection. A month's outbreak in a global public Over 100,000 baby deaths worldwide. Putting themselves at risk if they don't. There have been 300 cases. Resistance now a global threat. Bugs and bacteria surround us. We barely think of the risks of infection until we get sick. For years, we've relied on a suite of antibiotics to treat infections that just a few decades ago would have caused deaths. But as we've become reliant on those antibiotics, bacteria have become resistant. Antibiotic resistance is a slowly developing environmental catastrophe. But the environment that, in which the catastrophe is happening is the germs that live in our intestines and on our skin. And we're gradually um, ending up with um, more antibiotic resistance germs on us and in us than we used to have. It's an arms race between us and the, and the microorganisms. And that's a very hard thing when you're fighting against a foe that can essentially mutate and change so fast. The World Health Organization believes overuse of antibiotics and our body's growing resistance to their effect is one of the biggest threats to our survival. There's a risk that that will quickly spread throughout the community and then we could actually end up with a real outbreak of infection that we can't actually treat, you know, that could be life-threatening. I was like an active kid. I did karate, I did netball. I loved running. Just being able to be free is just the best. <laughs> Ellie was your typical Kiwi girl who was just full of bounce and energy. She was very good at long distance running. And she was good at karate. And then anything to dance, so hip hop, you name it, um, she would do it. We're a very outgoing family, so we just love doing heaps of cool stuff. And, um, and she was um, in a cross country one day, running, healthy. There was like these two pits you had to jump over. The first pit I jumped over, I got a cut on my big left toe, and then the second one, um, I got ground shot, but like way worse. As soon as I stopped and started walking, I was just in agony. We thought you strained a muscle, you've done something like that, it's something benign, it's not going to be a, a real big deal, it'll naturally heal. And so we weren't really that concerned other than we felt sorry for her pain. In the morning, she was far too much pain to put any weight right. on that leg so she couldn't walk. So I, I just took her into the um, A&E and um, when I got in, uh, they straight away saw her and just started working on her and I was just, I was in, going into shock. We just thought we're there at the right place. We're gonna, it's all gonna be good and she's gonna get better and we'll go home. Bacteria had traveled inside her body and rapidly taken hold. It was attacking and eating away at her bones and cartilage. The infection was in her knee and hip and by the time she reached hospital, it had spread to her elbow. And then once the lab results came back the next day, they noticed it was the superbug, MRSA.
one in 50 people will have the MRSA bacteria living on their skin. It's only when it gets inside the body that it's deadly. MRSA stands for methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Staph aureus is uh, one of the most aggressive bacterial pathogens when it's in places where it shouldn't be other than the nose. It causes clotting in the tissues. It causes inflammation with redness and tenderness. It can damage the tissues enough to be at risk of dying from the infection. Bacteria are everywhere. We inhale thousands of minute particles with every breath. Our hands are covered with more than 150 different species. Each of us have our own unique colony of bacteria. The difference between good bacteria and bad bacteria isn't actually that clear cut. We have others that live on us quite happily. We have them living in our nose and our throat, uh, and they don't, under normal circumstances, do much damage. But if they get in the wrong place, then they can also become damaging. And then, of course, we have ones that we call kind of professional pathogens, and these are ones that once they get into our body, and they can produce toxins, they can do all sorts of things to make us sick. So powerful was the bacteria's hold. Instead of getting better, Ali was getting worse. She had a big collection of pus mm. in her hip from the infection, and they had to get it out as fast as they can. Ali. So good to get that all. It's so important. Oh, that's actually clean, okay? Yeah. And I'm oh, no, oh. You're doing so well. <laughs> so we were thinking it's going to all be good, and then they'll come in and they'll say, "Sorry, Ali's not good. We need to go back and operate again." And it just carried on and on, and she would just be screaming all the time. There was just so many things happening. I couldn't break free, I couldn't go. And then just being in so much pain and looking over and seeing my mum crying and my dad crying and just wanting to just go. Um, sometimes I wanted to die because it was so hard. She started getting some bacterial growth on one of her heart valves. And then the, the fellow in charge of Ellie's case called us into a quiet room and just uh, looked at us and said to us, look, um, I just need to say that your daughter is extremely unwell. Because he said, I, I have to be honest, I'm not very optimistic you definitely will need to say your goodbyes to her now. We were inconsolable and I remember exactly where it was that we just broke down and we couldn't move or anything. For decades, we've been largely ignorant of the tremendous harm that can result from severe infection. A century ago, people regularly died. With the advent of antibiotics came complacency. We came to believe a prescription from our doctor would solve infection. But experts say it is our overuse of the modern range of drugs that has allowed bacteria to develop resistance effectively outsmarting us. We have used so much antibiotics since the end of World War II. There have been more and more bacteria become more and more resistant to the antibiotics we have, and we've not had new antibiotics become available in the last approximately 20 years. Auckland grandfather Brian Kettle lived for years as a diabetic, undergoing regular treatment. Infection is one of the life-threatening consequences of diabetes. When Brian was 52, he developed a bacterial infection so severe doctors feared it might kill him. Brian required aggressive treatment with antibiotics. I had fractured a bone connecting my hip to my groin. 
and that fracture had become infected over the two weeks that I was ignoring it. Yeah. That infection grew so much and part of the reason I was unwell was because I had a bug in my blood. And you get lots of bugs when you're on dialysis. I have to take some antibiotics. This is something I have to do four times a day. So this is my pick line. Goes up here and down where the artery leads straight into my into the valve of my heart so that it can be pumped straight away through my body as fast as possible. The bacteria that infected his hip produced an enzyme known as ESPL, which has the power to break down antibiotics, rendering them ineffective. And it's, it's for life. It's a bug you can't get rid of. They found no cure for it. And it's in your bowel. And it's a bug that you catch from sharing the bathroom. One that is most worrying doctors in hospitals like ours are a group of organisms called the carbapenemase producing Enterobacteriaceae, which is a big uh, kind of name for a family of bacteria. Uh, it includes E. coli and another organism called Klebsiella pneumoniae. And these are organisms that can be carried by healthy people, so we can carry them in our noses, uh, in our guts, on our skin. Um, but if you're in hospital uh, or if you're a vulnerable um, person, you might have some other disease, then these can cause huge problems. Staph aureus is a germ that lives on the, in the nose and on the skin and most commonly infects the skin. And people who have uh, frequent injuries to the skin, say shaving um, or other abrasions to the skin, or people who have skin diseases like eczema uh, or other diseases that make small cracks or injuries in the skin are more likely to end up with Staph aureus infection, whether it's caused by methicillin sensitive or methicillin resistant Staph aureus. So before I just get you With the home treatment not working, Brian was readmitted to hospital. Both his feet were now grossly infected by the ESPL bacteria. With the infection now resistant to antibiotics, doctors had run out of alternatives. The only way to stop infection spreading was to amputate. So they had to bride all the infected material that was there. At the same time they did that, they removed the fifth digit on my left foot because that had become infected as well. And they wanted to catch the infection before it spread all the way up this leg so it wouldn't be end up like this foot. Diabetics are more susceptible to developing infections. High blood sugar levels can weaken the patient's immune system. Some diabetics, like Brian, have reduced blood flow to the extremities. So what the doctors have said to me basically is if they can't bring any of this infection in control, they have no option but to take my leg off. Once you develop um, an antibiotic resistant bug, it can be very difficult to, to eradicate that or get rid of it. And that's very common with MRSA. Fortunately for many of them still respond to some common antibiotics, but increasingly we're getting multiple resistant bugs which won't respond to any antibiotic. Antibiotic resistance is the ability of uh, microorganisms, or especially bacteria, to be able to resist the medicines that we normally use to kill them. And they have lots of different ways of doing this. They can um, stop a, a, an antibiotic from getting inside their cell. They can stop it from actually working on the thing that it needs to work on to kill them. Um, they can chop it up. They can do all sorts of things. Now we have these strains that are essentially resistant to everything. So the first case happened earlier this year. A lady in the USA died from a completely untreatable organism. The doctors tried something like 26 antibiotics and nothing worked. Ali remained in hospital for more than three months. Every day raised new medical concerns. Ali's infection was now systemic. Her blood was effectively transporting the infection around her body. 
because it had gone systemic, it was dropping seeds in her elbow. And then her knee, and you just yeah. worry that where is it going to attack next? Because wherever it attacks, it eats. It was right on the verge, and then they oh, managed scary. to bring around. Her clendermycin that she was on, she wasn't going forward. It was so slow, so they decided to add rifampicin and another antibiotic. Sleepy, honey. Yeah. Sleepy, isn't it a nice feeling? They yeah. suggested it's like introducing a cannon in warfare. And the rifampicin has some interesting side effects because it makes your tears go red. And then she had these incredible bad itches that would just make you scream and go crazy. It was like all these bugs underneath your skin. There are plenty of infections caused by bacteria that we're on our last antibiotics for. Those antibiotics are risky to give because they can cause damage to the person's body. The World Health Organization says we need to change the way antibiotics are prescribed. It's become just the normal thing to go to the doctor and get antibiotics because um, it was like a miracle when they first came out, you know, and you could treat all sorts of things and you got miraculously better. And so I think we've sort of lulled into that sense of, oh, well, a pill can fix anything, but actually in reality it can't, and sometimes it can lead to further problems developing. Thank you. Rose. Hi. I, I think a big part of why doctors will often give a prescription is that they sort of feel they need to keep the customer happy. Many customers would have a view, if they don't get an antibiotic, then they'll go and see another doctor that's going to actually prescribe it. Looking at her, uh, she's got a really bad virus. So viruses don't actually respond to antibiotics, so a type of bug that causes infection, but antibiotics won't make any difference. Um, and so the key thing really is to keep her hydrated and um, make sure that she's feeling comfortable. A recent study of a very large number of children, about five or 6,000 children um, in the north of the North Island, found that on average, by the age of five, the number of antibiotic horses that a child had had was about 10. And only about 3% of children had not had an antibiotic course by the time they reached five. In Auckland's Middlemore Hospital, Brian was acutely aware he was losing his battle to the infection. They're really disappointed with the condition they found my heel to be in. And he looked at me very solemn-like and then told me that uh, he apologised. It wasn't easy for him to say, but it looked like they'd have to remove my leg. A world where antibiotics are much less effective than they are now might look like a world where it's difficult or if not impossible to do uh, complicated surgery because complicated surgery often leads to severe infections. We might lose the ability to treat people for leukaemia or other cancers because our treatment tends to make people more susceptible to infections. And then we'd have people with untreatable infections arising in the community, like gonorrhea, uh, pneumonia and urinary tract infections and we're seeing more and more patients with infections that are difficult or are very occasionally impossible to treat. This is Ellie on her birthday. Woo! 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 Meanwhile, the little girl who had spent months in Starship Children's Hospital was finally well enough to come home. Her young body had fought against the invading bacteria and despite terrible odds, she had survived. But her recovery is far from complete. She was still NG fed, she's still on antibiotics. She was on about 28 tablets a day, uh, twice a day. One was 12 hourly, one was six hourly. She still couldn't walk, she couldn't barely stand, she was so skinny. She'd been laying on her back for four and a half months and all of her muscles had gone out of her body, especially her legs. She still had a cast on, so she couldn't go and have a shower. So it was 24 hour care around the clock. But we made sure that Ellie never felt like she couldn't do anything. Nope. She 
she said, oh, Dad, I, I'd love to go for a ride on a horse. Put and the two dollars in. She was so skinny, she didn't she have didn't enough have the strength to, to hold on to the sides. Brian's advanced diabetes, coupled with the infection, meant that within months, he was in hospital, again. This time, doctors needed to amputate his leg. They realised that the infection around the tissue had settled near the bone. They were concerned that that infection has gone into the bone, prevent the infection from getting into the marrow and making its way up. It's really depressing. I think it's safe to say I'm pretty down about it. Brian reflected on his life. He decided to exercise his right. He refused further surgery. I wasn't going to be cured of um, this infection. This infection was going to continue, and I stand more of a chance of fighting the, the, um, the contamination off if I stay on these antibiotics for the rest of my life. Um, so um, I believe that losing this part of my body and then taking the rest of my limb um, isn't going to improve or lengthen the amount of time dramatically. and when you're uh, in pain and that distraction of just thinking about the love and the bond that you have between your children and your grandchildren, man, that's, that's been, that's just been so intense for me lately. And I apologised to them that I was not as strong as they thought I was. And, but I said, I just can't fight it anymore. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm just too tired. Brian was discharged from hospital with more antibiotics. In 2016, just weeks after his discharge, Brian died. hope. Scientists in New Zealand and across the world are taking on the challenge to find new antibiotics. The ideal antibiotic is one that can kill all species of bacteria. In my lab, we are trying to find new antibiotics from New Zealand fungi, and one of the reasons we think there might be something different there, we have plants and animals that are not found anywhere else in the world. So we're hoping that we will find new classes of antibiotics. It's just a case of searching. We've got over 10,000 fungal isolates that we have to search through. We've gone through about 500. Haven't found anything new yet, but it's early days. What we're looking for is to see whether the fungus that we are incubating the bacteria with, whether it can kill any or some or all of the uh, different species of bacteria. Every time a bacteria uh, replicates itself, uh, it has this opportunity to become a mutant and to change. Well, for some bacteria, they do that every 20 minutes. So it, we're, it is very hard to keep ahead of them. The um, costs from discovering a new antibiotic to getting it to market um, and being available for use is estimated to be around a billion dollars for each antibiotic. It, it does take um, about seven to 10 years from discovery to bringing a drug to market, but that's not happened at all in the last few years in terms of bringing them to market. It's more than three years since Ali's medical trauma. She's progressed, but bears physical and emotional scars likely to last her lifetime. Ali is now in a 
hip spiker because of all the operations in her left hip. Can you help me with my shoes? There was such there was incredible no... damage yeah. done to the joint from the infection. Mm. So instead of a nice round ball that fits into the joint, it is now flat and it's pitted. And all the cartilage has been completely, it's almost like they said, if you took a shotgun and you blasted uh, the inside of that with a shotgun, that's the, all the holes that were affected by the bacteria. Darling, have a great day at school, eh? Mm -hmm. Remember, my children love you, eh? It's Friday today. Yes! Yay! Yes, the weekend. Yeah. All right, sweetie, see you later, eh? Okay. Bye, yeah. darling. I do physio at school, and I don't take any medication, though. Yeah, I get tired. That's why I have an amazing teacher that always helps me. If I say, oh, I'm sorry, but I'm really tired or I'm sore, can I please just do this? And she'll always let me off. So I can't really um, sit in a normal chair because of my hip, because it's um, fused in a, this position, really. Well, I do get pain in my hip and it's horrible, but sometimes I can manage it. I just shake it off, have to do a little walk, but if I can't, I would, Mum will probably pick me up. I'm not going to do my three rounds, I... No, we're not going to do three No. I really want to do pee so badly, but I can't play netball, I can't do karate, I can't ride a bike, and I, and I used to be able to dance, but now I can't really. Sometimes I get a bit emotional if I see, if, like, the class running. Some days I would just be like, oh, why me? Like, why, why? So the belief is that um, Ellie is likely to have MRSA until she's 60. So the MRSA will exist in her bone marrow. It will, at this stage, remain dormant, but any trauma, significant trauma, can cause it to reactivate. I think any parent that has come very close to losing a child, it makes you realise they mean everything to you. Every day that we see our, our daughter smile and look happy is a gift and it doesn't take us long to remember how things were. I'm happy that I'm alive. It's just a roller coaster. <laughs> and you can be sad at one point and then you can be so happy at another. But yeah, you're still the normal Ellie. <laughs> Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.